Coming up on the Buckeye Guard, we pay a visit to the Homeland Response Force, check out what it takes to keep F-16s flying, and we meet the newest member of the 121st Air Refueling Wing's Sexual Assault and Prevention Program. Today we are setting up our medical treatment tent as a practice for our collective training exercise. We are operating at about 51% capacity because we have um, a lot of our members are activated for COVID response. So we are really undermanned, but just getting the mission done, getting some good training in, um, supporting the Army with their training in Indiana next month. We are the Ohio Homeland Response Force. This is the medical detachment at the 121st. Our primary responsibility is to mitigate the loss of life when we are activated. We can respond to any state, any area um, needed. There are 27 teams in the nation and we're strategically placed. We are region five of the FEMA region breakdown and there are five states in our region we actually um, have the most states out of the 10 regions. So we have six trucks and trailers, and we have four tents that we can set up, um, basically a improvised hospital in any type of setting, in a parking lot, in a field. We can even set up without the tents in a, a hardened shelter if need be, but we have all capabilities and supplies and equipment to respond at a moment's notice to provide excellent medical care and do our job at mitigating the loss of life and reducing any type of medical incident that can occur. We have re medical requirements and even um, requirements, just our Air National Guard requirements that we must maintain on top of doing our exercises, our yearly exercises and our evaluations that are mandatory for us to be able to continue to operate we go through these trainings to ensure that we are staying up on our skills, that we, our supplies and our equipment are good to go as far as calibration, expiration dates on supplies, making sure that we have everything that we need and that we are at our best self to respond to the community. My name is uh, Staff Sergeant Michael Stella. I am an engine mechanic at the 180th Fighter Wing. We work on the F100 229 version engine. Uh, which goes into the F-16 fighter jet and it is a one engine aircraft so it's pretty important what we do here. The engine shop is basically broken down into two sets of maintainers. We have our flight line and the back shop. So the flight line is the front line. They are the ones that are out there checking on the interfaces with the aircraft. They're the ones uh, taking care of any issues that the pilots have, um, anything the crew chiefs might find. So they are the ones that diagnose and fix anything that can be fixed while it's in the aircraft. If it's too big of a job, they will pull it and they can swap another engine in an afternoon into that aircraft and the broke one comes back here for us to fix. Crew chief usually calls in uh, and says that there's something up or uh, after the flight comes down, we usually download all the engine data from the flight and if uh, code pops is what it's called, but if you uh, find a code for the engine, you diagnose it and if it needs maintenance, then you either can do the maintenance on the aircraft or if it's required to pull the engine to bring it into the back shop, we can do that as well. Usually once we get an engine back into the shop, we do a full receiving inspection, look over everything. Uh, we'll know in advance kind of what we need to do and what's been found to cause the engine to come back here, but usually with the receiving inspection, we take a further dive into what needs to be done and we can find you know, hidden things wrong with the engine and whatnot in order to fully repair it and get it back to functioning shape. After we go through and do the, do the work that needs to be done, uh, we usually take it out to the uh, hush house or the test cell and run the engine and put it through its paces as if it was in the air, but we can, we can monitor it and we can make sure everything's working properly before we put it into an aircraft. Acts as a safety precaution to make sure that it's, it's good to go. It's, it's a very satisfying job knowing that what you do makes a direct impact on whether or not the aircraft fly and if there's all of them in the air, you usually know you did a pretty good job. I, Cal, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully support the 121st Air Refueling Wing Airmen in my capacity as the Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Program Military Facility Dog. 
that I will love them unconditionally, protect and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the commands of my handler and the 121st Air Refueling Commander. So help me God. Cal? Pop it? Oh. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> The program itself is sexual assault prevention and response and we handle victims of sexual assault. So anybody who is a dependent over the age of 18 to include service members um, are eligible for services and they can come to us and they can file a um, sexual assault case with us, whether it be a restricted or unrestricted. And that's where Cal, the sexual assault prevention and response facility dog, would come in to help the victim out, just kind of relax them, uh, kind of engage with them and let them know like that he's there so that they can pet him and kind of loosen them up and allow them to be a little bit more social with us and open with us so that we can get them the services that they need. He is kind of like a, a buffer. So when you're walking around with a, a dog, um, people tend to gravitate towards the dog and want to talk to the dog. When they do that, they eventually start conversating with me. I get to tell them what I do, kind of breaks down barriers, it builds that rapport with that individual and it creates that comfort level for them, which instills trust and that gives them the ability to open up more to me. So um, having Cal there to kind of bridge that gap between the victim and our office is really beneficial. Cal is out here to help me not only uh, work with victims but also promote the program and market the program to everyone so that we make sure that they know the message and the commander's intent for the program. So he'll walk out there with me and meet and greet all the airmen in the wing. We can attend command calls, squadron meetings, potlucks, anything that has a social gathering or if it's even just a one-on-one. -on -one. So being a facility dog, he has the capacity to be there for an individual or just everyone in a room which is really great. So Cal is just turned two. So he is just a little over, just celebrated his second birthday, and he is a Black Lab Golden Retriever Cross. Very, very sweet boy. Very loving, very, <laughs> very affectionate. Which makes him perfect for, for this job. Cal was raised to be a service dog, um, just like every other dog is raised in our program. And when he came for formal training and he came to me, I noticed right away that he's a very social dog. He really loves attention, he loves people, he wants everybody to pet him. And I knew we had a couple different places that had applied for facility dogs. And so I talked to my boss and said that I thought Cal would be better suited as a facility dog versus a service dog. And so we looked at the different um, applications that we had for facility dogs and picked out the 121st. <laughs> and then I started working with him, basically just getting him used to being around, you know, lots of people going up and saying hi to people, as well as doing some other, what we call tricks, some fun things that he can show off to, you know, bring a smile to, to people's faces. Back in 2019, I applied for him and um, we, it was a very thorough, very long application process, a um, lot of questions. I, of course, had to get it approved all the way up the chain of command to make sure that they understood. We are the first military base in the state of Ohio to have a facility dog, so we're definitely setting the standard and leading the way, which I'm so excited for. I'm really excited. I feel really honored to have him.
To see more about the Ohio National Guard, go to ong.ohio.gov and be sure to follow us on your favorite social media platforms.